Robert Ducky here. Welcome to episode 6 of the German Campaign in Close Combat 3. You did it. I hit 500 subscribers and then some. Keep it going. Click the subscribe button, like the video, and turn on notifications. This has been a very fun and engaging series, so thanks to all of you. There's a giveaway coming up, so stay tuned. The Bolshevist capital is just beyond the enemy of your front. Break through and you'll be fighting outside the Kremlin walls. Your objective is to knock the enemy force aside and secure a route to Moscow. Your command, attached to 19th Panzer Division, should be able to add armor including Mark IV tanks to help brush aside the enemy. You can add new teams or refit your existing teams before launching your attack. Intelligence indicates the enemy might have KV or T-34 series tanks to oppose you. The terrain consists of low forest and open fields, offering long and wide fields of fire. Enemy tanks or AT guns in the village can sweep the approaches with deadly fire. Established routes might be faster than cross-country travel, but the routes are more likely to come under enemy fire. Flank attacks might be time-consuming, but offer decisive results. To the Kremlin! The Kremlin! Okay, I see lots of interesting points. First, that looks like a frozen river running through the map. Or maybe a running river, I don't know. How's that going to impact my assault? Next, there's tons of cover, so that does explain the use of flanking maneuvers. Finally, there appears to be a hill with trenches smack dab in the middle of all the approaches. So if we go across here along the top, that avoids the hill, as well as gets us towards them without being out in the road if we come down through the forest. Last, we could go down this way, then crawl across and come in through here. It's open to the trenches, but it still enables us to get away from the main center part of the map and away from the river. I don't know if we can cross that though, so that's a thing. We're going to have to figure that out. I think that means that ideally I kind of want to set up mostly to take the northern approach across the forests and down to the south, but I do want to have a few units in place a little bit to the south along the west wall because we've got that big hill to hide behind and then maybe try and get across the river if it's not too chaotic. Okay, so we have 212 requisition points, and Waldo is our only team that has a KIA and one wounded. But I have an idea here. I do want to add two scout teams. That'll give us winter units, as well as fill in some voids where we need some troops to be able to sneak ahead. So we're going to change the scout teams to Steiner and Waldo, respectively, based on the requests from yesterday's video. And then... We're going to remove the infantry squads, I think. I have an idea here to open up some space. So I want to get rid of the two rifle squads and retire. Sorry, just reading the little pop-up. It doesn't have anything important to it. Just making sure I'm not doing something crazy. So retire this guy. And then I'm kind of thinking something along the line of machine guns. I haven't really used the MG-34s, but... I'm kind of interested in doing it. Uh, they are able to act alone. They do have good morale, and they are experienced. There's still only a sniper in Elite. I don't think we would replace them with snipers. They can act alone. Excellent morale, tough veterans. That is kind of nice. But what about in armor? So... Still just tanks. We do have plenty of points. We could we could tank two tanks if we wanted to. I just don't know if we take way more vehicles and not have the maneuverability of the infantry. I mean, we can afford it, so it seems like a great idea. But I don't want to get too bogged down with tanks. So the armored car kind of splits that. Do we go back to the armored car and try and maybe get away with using it as like a fast raiding unit? But again, we have open terrain. If we take that, that's a problem. If we go elite, there's light tanks. I don't know that a Panzer 38 is worth the 58 points. We got the 3.7 centimeter cannon. But we take that. That uses half our points for two of them. And I don't know that that's better. I, I would almost maybe rather take two more Mark 3s or something and basically spend the same amount. Um... Yeah, they're, I guess they're more. It'd be 160. It's still enough, though. So in support, though, we could do... Ooh. Well, there's heavy machine gun. We got the Schwerz team. 
And then there are also machine gun half tracks. Okay, there's no elite support. Um, heavy machine gun scout car, heavy machine gun carrier, regular machine gun scout car. The Schweers is only 18. We could take two of those. I, I don't know that we need to save the points, right? Like if we take the infantry machine guns, am I doing it to save them or am I doing it to keep them maneuverable? Um, yes, the, the half tracks would be faster, but the infantry could move through the forest better. So this heavy machine gun carrier, I'm trying to figure out what really the difference is. I guess it's just the armor MG 34 and this one, hold on, wait, MG 34, right? Yeah. What's the other one? Oh, there's two coax. MG okay. So there's two MG 34s on the HMG carrier. So there's a benefit to taking that. Um, good morale experienced limited actions. So they need a commander with them, I guess. Like they won't they won't be able to perform. These guys can act alone. That alone might actually make them better regardless of armor and stuff. It's just not having to worry about who's behind them. So I kind of think now, because I didn't realize that was going to be a problem. I kind of think now the MG34 teams, if we took two of those, that's that's probably the best way to go. So I think that's what we're going to do. Sorry, that was a very long process to figure it out. Next, on to Costa. I said we would get you upgraded, and it's time to do that. We got plenty of points, so we're going to upgrade you to a Panzer III, I think. Um, I don't know. I'm tempted with the flame. But it's, it's talking about us facing enemy tanks, and we know it's open terrain, so this might not be the time to experiment with the flame tank. I think maybe we just spend the 30, get you a Mark III, and then I don't have to worry about uh, ranged attacks from their enemy tanks as I'm trying to roll across the open fields. So we need to get this renamed. All right. Okay, moving on to Bertha. She treated us well. She didn't do much, but... We don't really need the AT gun here. There's tons of foliage, but we can't even set up inside of it. So what are we going to do with this? I think we retire that. We're back up to 160 points. And then let's go back to command. And what do you think about taking another command Panzer III? It's 104 points, but Brunner needs a teammate. And then we can split our forces a little bit better. We'll actually have two command tanks. And... We're going to end up with six total tanks. So, like, that's a legit fighting force that we don't have to worry about, I don't think. Now that we've got our units selected, let's go Infantry Squad, and we're going to rename this one to Andy's Raiders. Andy's Raiders is supposed to be any uh, Infantry Squad. Machine Gun, still Infantry. Um, if you want, like, a legitimate Infantry Rifle type squad, let me know. But that's what we've got right now. And for our second Command Tank... Based on Cross of Iron, we are going to be renaming this one to Stronsky. So now I haven't seen the movie, but everybody's kind of getting me pumped up about it. So I'm looking forward to it. And then we have another infantry squad, and it was requested for, you know, any any unit. And so we're going to be renaming this one to Moonot. I don't know if I'm saying that right. My... Names of fortresses in Switzerland is not great, and neither is my pronunciation. So if that's way wrong, laugh about it, post it in the comments, tell me how to say it. But we're going with Moonot. Um, so I, I am going to do that for them. That fills out our entire roster. And then hopefully we get some of these other units available uh, as we as we level up and rank up and stuff. But for right now, I think this gives us a decent uh, assortment of units to use where we've got some heavy firepower with the tanks, but we've also got some flexibility with some infantry. And last thing before we move on, we are going to look through all the units real quick, just so we can fully see what's there and all of you can see. So in command, no conscripts, a few regulars that we've all seen, no elite. Back to the conscripts, we're going to go to infantry. There's only second line infantry, all the regular infantry that we've seen. And the only thing in Elite is Sniper. And then back to Conscripts. In Armor, no Conscript Armor. All the tanks that we've seen. And then we looked at this a little bit earlier. But um, in Elite, there's the Flame and there's the Panzer 38. So those are only two Elite Armors. 
conscript no support and then in conscript er, i'm sorry in regular support there's all the stuff that we've been looking at and the flamethrower at the bottom that's hiding and then if we go up to elite we also saw earlier when i looked there's no elite support so there's those units if you do want to pause take a moment look through them tell me if there's something that i haven't been paying attention to but i feel like we've got a pretty good grasp on what units are currently available at this point in the war okay so we need to figure out where everybody's going to go um, as you'll notice these guys are highlighted it was suggested that i turn on the outline and look at the cover so i've turned that on um in the options i want to give it a try i don't know if i'm going to find it distracting i don't know if you're going to find it distracting but i do want to give it a shot and see what it looks like um we can't get very close to the river and what is that like I don't know if that's a gun emplacement or what, but I'm worried about it already. I didn't notice that before. Um, we have a ford, which worries me that we actually can't cross the river. So I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we're going to take uh, Moonot over here a little bit back from there. Maybe get him in this ditch, put him on defend. I don't know. I guess we, we can put him up here aiming up to the right, but I don't think we need to because... There's only a small amount of land that they could be occupying. So we'll just have him cover to the right. And then we've got Andy's Raiders. Um, I don't know. It's another MG. So we can't really get him any further up. I like him in the ditch. I just don't know if I want them both together like this. So we'll let that marinate for a minute. All right, Waldo. We got a re recon squad right here. So he's up here. He's going to be our advance force that's going to start crawling across and making the move. As we move here to Steiner, this is where I'm thinking we're going to start putting just a couple units down here. And if it's clear, we're going to use them to flank around and put pressure on at the south. Uh, that, I think, was that all of our infantry? And let's see. I don't know that we can do this. Let's move at least one of the machine guns up here. They can kind of support the recon. We'll have them both start advancing up there. Uh, I forgot we did have the, the mortar team. So we are going to bring them, I think, down here. Uh, I was told maybe keep them a little bit closer to the infantry. But because the terrain is so open, I am going to keep them back here at the hill. And I think what we're going to do is we're also going to move Steiner back here uh, behind the hill as well. Until at least the fighting starts and we know if there's somebody right in front of us. All right, now our tanks. Um, we have all the same, so it doesn't matter what goes where. But I think we need something up here. So we got Quelas up here. He's going to just be on defend, but he's going to need support. So I think we're going to do maybe one more tank and one leader. So if we take Costa up here, um, I don't really know where. I, I guess like... There's, there's not a lot of places, so just kind of in the field for a minute. Um, we'll bring some tanks down here, and I think we'll put them behind the hill as well. Let's throw Bruner up top. He can kind of be the support for these guys. And obviously, they're well inside of his range. Um, once we move up, we'll try and keep the infantry there if we can. Same with these three tanks. We're going to do the same thing down here. So we've got Stronsky. He's going to be on defend. Uh, Rick, you are going to be down here with him. I think we're going to keep the commanders behind our main tanks for a minute. So I moved uh, Stronsky back. We got Rick there. We're going to put Garcia right here. He's kind of on the top of the hill, but that enables him to look at them a little bit and maybe get some shots off or spot what's going on if they maneuver towards us. And, you know, command is talking about tanks. I'm scared. Okay, we already got a red dot. Uh, it is a gun, but that's not what I thought. So the brown dot up there that maybe is like a entrenched position was not a gun, but that one was. So 76 millimeter anti-tank. Uh, perfect shot having Garcia there. He took that out immediately. All right, next plan. Nobody else on the map. Let's get these guys moving up. All right, let's... Oh, sorry, I hit escape. Don't hit escape. Right click. There we go. All right. Moonot, you actually cover here. I didn't tell you to cover there. Now I changed my mind. I don't know if they'll move up into the burned out building. Let's cover it. 
Um, Steiner, I guess, let's keep him low. We could move, but let's not have him stand up if they don't see him, if, they, if they're not there. Let's just have him crawl for now. I'm going to reposition Garcia down here a little bit at the edge of the hill, keep kind of eyes on him. Uh, this is going to be our main attack up here, so this is going to take a little bit more effort, I think. I'm also splitting into two units, and I haven't really mastered um, single formation maneuvers, and now we've got two. So good luck to me. Here we go. I know these guys are slow, and I am tempted to put them on move, and maybe I should. I don't want them to get gunned down. So I am playing it kind of conservatively because I just don't really know what to expect. I feel like once we get in our first major battle, that's when I'm going to kind of start judging how well they'll respond, how well I will respond, things like that. So what we can do is for right now, take it easy, do the crawling. Um, it will be a little bit slower, but hopefully, hang on, I messed this up. There we go. Machine gun in the building. Recon up top, um, but hopefully as we go a little slower, it'll give me a little bit more time to make decisions and adjust. So if something happens at the top and I'm looking at the bottom or vice versa, I've got, you know, a split second to get up there and respond before, you know, the guy that's walking or running gets shot at. I'm moving the tanks up. I want to keep the infantry kind of out in front for a minute, but uh, we are going to move the tanks up to support red dot, red dot. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, mortar and start dropping. Uh, start dropping soon. Um, we gonna shoot? Okay, there we go. Now they're shooting. We did start with 51 rounds, so that's not too bad. That's a decent amount of mortars. I like it. That also drove them back. They, they broke up their assault. We're not hitting them right yet, but they did stop running at us. Because of that, and because everybody's doing okay up top, I'm moving the machine gun over here to help interdict in case they keep their assault going. See, they're still kind of debating, like kind of crawling up, kind of crawling back. Let's get a machine gun in position to do something about it. That looked like a direct hit. Why are you not dead? Um, all right, Waldo, keep moving. That's my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I'm putting him on move now because we are at the forest. Tanks move up right behind Waldo. And then Rick, maybe come down here. We're going to kind of take a chance here, but we are going to move uh, these tanks up. Interesting. We are going to move these tanks up and start putting a little bit of pressure on the south just so we can stay in line with Steiner and not put him out to dry. So we'll move these guys down a little bit, see if there's anything on the other side of the trees. But we haven't scouted it, so we got to take it easy. Um... All the shooting. What's the shooting? It's not these guys. Is it one of these tanks? Yeah, it is. Okay. I, di I didn't think they were the ones shooting. But that's okay. Um, Actually, formally target that. There we go. There we go. They're opening up. Now we're getting hits. You can hear them dying. Perfect. That's what we need. That's pushing them back. So they are going back to the hill. We're going to drop some mortars right here. I don't know that it's going to help, but, you know, if they've got machine gun fire, cannon fire, and then some mortars dropping on them, like, that might rattle them just a little bit. Uh, Rick, stay here, but look that direction. Oh, there we go. Stronsky, I think I kind of want to try and cross the river. I don't know. I, I feel like we can. They were clearly going to crawl across it. Hopefully it doesn't affect our tanks, but it looks like that's there aesthetically and it probably offers cover and things like that but it's not going to be an obstacle we can't get across that was my biggest concern was did we have to cross at the ford and if so how are we going to perform these flanking maneuvers but everything looks okay right now um tanks are moving up seems like everything's okay up here so far they're now shooting mortars at us i don't know if it's coming from the hill Um, keep going. He made it across. Perfect. Let's get Rick moved up as well. And let's keep some pressure on. I'm going to keep an eye on this little sandbag position or whatever that is. It kind of looks like it's a foxhole. Maybe a bunker. It's kind of big. Uh, but whatever it is, there might be something there. So we're going to puppy guard it with our cannon. It's not currently shooting at us. Yeah, I, I guess it's okay. Move up here. Um, I was also told... 
I'll keep... I'll move better and move fast, I think. Like, I'll keep my frontal armor the way I want it if I move fast. And I was told, like, if I'm reversing, like, I, that's when I need to use, like, move and sneak. But if I if I want to keep the frontal armor facing the direction, that's when I need to move fast. So let me know if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, we, we're going to move up here. We can see them, but we can't do anything about it, really. Garcia's been holding back guarding our mortar team. Time for him to charge to the front. All right, let's keep moving Steiner up. He's almost to his point. Uh, maybe not that far. Maybe not all the way to the two-story. When the tanks are here, then I'll feel a little better. Right now, they've only got a little bit of line of sight, so we don't want to go too far out in front. Um, Stronsky, you cover down there. Um, they are shooting intermittently at the guys up top, but I'm more concerned about our team getting shot at. So you know what? Let's bring him down right in line with them. We got one team, or I'm sorry, one tank right above Stronsky that can still cover the middle part of the map. Infantry's coming down. Tank's moving. Um, I think it's time to move our machine gun up. He's held down that position. Let's get him moved up. They are mortaring uh, Munot. They are, they are... No! Okay, they actually got a lucky mortar hit. I don't get those lucky mortar hits, but they did get one of them. We're just going to have them hide for a minute. Uh, hello. That's that's why we've been taking it easy. Those guys right there. Get them focused. Team wipe. Okay. Machine gun team, I think it was. I'm not certain, but I think that was a machine gun. That's wiped out. Uh, tanks, keep doing your thing. I don't want to roll them into strong point Ivan yet, but I do want to keep them putting pressure on it. Because if that team is sitting there, we want to get them driven out. So we're going to set up a perimeter in the trees. And I was, I was saying about Moonot, I was going to hide them in the trees because I think that offered them enough concealment that the mortars stopped shooting at them. So we're going to stop them where they're at for a minute. Stronsky, move up a little bit. Steiner, right behind him. Tank's going to be in the lead. Tank's going to be a little bit out, but I don't want the infantry gunned down when there's nowhere for them to go. Rick, you're holding down the middle of the map. Time to close in a little bit. Oh, man, this is, this is getting intense, though. Like got a lot going on at once we got another unit in the middle of the map coming at us in the trench so get these tanks moved across real quick and then what is it it's one guy gun that guy down okay he's dead oh they're shooting uh at rifle is that an at rifle where is it um maybe not Nope, it is. Uh-oh, it's hitting Costa. Move back, move back. We're going to keep him in sneak, because I think that's going to keep our front armor. Hopefully that's correct. All right, dropping mortars on this guy. Nope, further south, further south. Right down here. I mean, it, it wasn't a hit either way, but that's better. That's better. This is maybe where I should have moved the mortar team up. Uh, let me know if I should maybe keep advancing the mortar. I know you guys were saying to keep it closer to my infantry, but it's such an open area. Would you actually move it up here? Um, we are going to move Steiner into that two-story. I'm going to chance it, and we're going full sprint, get him out of the open. Uh, Rick, you're going to move across the river if possible and try and see if we can get some pressure on these guys. We can't see them, and they're shooting at everybody, so we need to do something about it. We got mortars dropping. We're going to drive Rick across, maybe over here, actually. Nope, nope, wait, that's another one. We just got hit again. Rick is damaged. Rick is damaged. There's a smoke grenade. Uh, put him on defend. Frontal armor, get it turned. We've got two people unconscious, loader and assistant. Um, this is a problem. Frontal armor's turning. Let's back him out. Put him in sneak. Uh-oh. Maybe sneak's not going to work. No, it is. It is. He's backing up. Okay, that might be the right system. Sneak. That'll allow him to reverse. I know that, but it is going to focus on keeping the frontal armor away from the enemy. I'm sorry. The frontal armor towards the enemy and backing safely. So, let's just get him out of here. He's going to become a problem if he's dead. I'd hate for Rick to die the horrible death of being killed in the middle of the battlefield in poor choices. All right. These guys running up. Tank coming up with them. And then we got these infantry moving down. 
We got tanks moving with them. We got a big problem with these guys hiding in the trench. So we got to get all these guys down behind them so we can put pressure. What is going on? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Tank. Somebody shoot it. Somebody shoot at the tank. We lost it. We lost the tank. All right. We're going to flank the tank. We're going to go up on top of the hill. We're going to come around the side. Bruner, you're going to come down here and you're going to get directly engaged. What's going on here? Holy crap. I missed that. Wow. Um, I really wasn't paying attention. I got distracted and... Oh. Wow. Saved. I was saying that I got distracted trying to get units behind the hidden team in the trench and I totally didn't notice the ambush in the south. Fortunately, Steiner was able to handle it alone and nothing bad happened, but it really could have gone a lot worse. The scarier part is I used to play a lot of online StarCraft 2 and... I used to micromanage units a lot. I was used to it, and I've been struggling this whole series. I wasn't the best, but I held my own in 1v1 Platinum and 2v2 Gold. So I expect better from myself, and you should too. And forgetting about StarCraft for a minute, back to this. We have a major victory. We have one lost infantryman from our uh, MG team. Uh, we've got two wounded. I don't know who... The oh, they were the tank crew. Never mind. We do know that. And... In our operational debriefing, we've lost six total men as casualties. Three dead, three wounded. And they've got 21 dead, 25 wounded, and 11 prisoners. Plus, they've lost a vehicle. And we've captured a tank. That's not even comparable. And we're sitting at a major victory as far as the operation goes as we head into the last battleground. So we can hold on for one more fight, and we're going to have another stunning win on our hands. We need to focus on continuing this, continuing to improve, but I like the way it's currently trending. We need to look into our roster real quick, see what's going on with everybody, see how everybody did, and then that will wrap this one up. So if we head on down and look at our health and look at our kills, we'll have a cleaner picture of where everybody stands. Um, nobody's hurt. Nobody's hurt. We got a decreasing health. All right, Rick. You lost two men in the loader and assistant position, and they're both red crosses, so they're not just wounded and coming back. They're out of commission. They're incapacitated. No more. Uh, we do have some increasing morale. I like to see that. We know about the lucky hit on Muna in the assistant position for the machine gun team, so that's our KIA there. And everything else is okay. Um, no kills from Muna. Andy's Raiders got one kill there, so Machine Gun Team did a little bit of work. We didn't use a lot of infantry. We mostly used tanks, so that makes sense. Garcia, he knocked out that gun right at the beginning. That was beautiful. Uh, two soldier kills. I'm happy with that. That's being active. I guess they were probably the AT crew from that gun. Uh, Costa, three kills. Five bravery, one in every position. Wonderful. Uh, nothing for Quellas. That was kind of a my bad because I ran you across the top and you didn't see anybody. Rick, you got three. I plopped you right in the middle of the fight. I got um, some good spots for you, but like you got some infantry kills there. Uh, Steiner, you had to go out and deal with it on your own. You got three braveries. Beautiful. Um, Stronsky, two kills. First time out as a commander, and he got some kills. Bruner's only got the one kill. So our, our newest commander is doing better than our commander we've had for the whole campaign. I am finally getting more comfortable using the vehicles and the command elements, so hopefully we see some glory coming up in those positions. But for right now, that's going to wrap up Episode 6, and when we come back, it's going to be the final battleground in this operation. We're only on Day 3 of 10, so this might be where we face real resistance. We shouldn't be steamrolling everyone without a ceasefire, so somewhere along the line, someone's going to fight back, right? But until then, thanks for fighting, soldiers. I'll see you in the next one.